The cash value inside of your whole life insurance policy can grow much faster. And in today's video, we are going to explain how. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to share with you some of the strategies that we use for our personal policies to make that cash value go a little further. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we post new videos. Okay, so in this video, you need to understand some vocabulary before we move forward. First is your premium. That means that is the fee that you pay to have an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. The next piece of vocabulary you need to know is a PUA, paid up additions rider. And then the next thing I would say is the base premium, meaning um, how much of of your premium is going towards the death benefit portion of your policy. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one, but I'll explain it as we get into it. Um, but the main thing that we say, like just with the foundation, you have your premium and your premium is going to pay for a paid up additions rider and the base premium inside of your policy. And the reason why this is important for you to know is because this is how we design our policy so that you can have max cash value. A traditional whole life insurance policy typically, typically doesn't have a paid up additions rider on it. It's only going to have base premium. So that's why you'll see that there isn't much growth in the first few years. Right. So a good example of that would be, um, let's say, take my personal policy as an example. When I first started my policy back in 2017, my premium is $10,000. Of that $10,000, $4,000 went to the base premium, which bought me death benefit. Now, traditionally, we would just have this base premium and over time in maybe three or four years, I would start to accumulate cash value. Yeah. But like Carmen said, we had a paid up addition writer, which was added to this policy, which is considered the cash or cash value. The $6,000 of the $10,000 went to this paid up addition writer, which makes up my total premium of ten thousand dollars four thousand dollars going towards the base uh base which buys me my death benefit and six thousand going towards the cash value what gives me immediately immediate cash value mm -hmm. you put those two together we have our total Exactly. So we get that. <laughs> that that's for step one. Um, step two is understanding that with the ten thousand dollars that Darius paid his premium, there is going to be a certain amount of cash that's going to grow every single year as that money continues to compound every year, tax free. Mm -hmm. Now, what the interesting thing to note is there's something called additional paid up additions, meaning additional funds you can add into the policy up to the MEC limit. That's the new vocabulary, MEC, M-E-C, the MEC limit. And what the MEC limit is, is it's a little window, <laughs> a small window opening that you can add additional funds into the policy in addition to the $10,000 that Darius had. Mm -hmm. So for example, with his specific policy, he could pay $10,000. That was the first ceiling, right? And then there was a little window where the insurance company said, you can put $4,000 in this window up to the MAC limit. And that is the ceiling. You could not pass that or else the policy is going to be considered uh, an investment and the entire policy and the growth moving forward is going to be taxed mm -hmm. and you do not want to cross that limit. Um, so to reassure you, just so you know, every policy that we design is uh, not going to MAC because because that's how we design our policy. So even if you try to mech it, the insurance company is going to send you a little letter back and go, hey, did you mean to do this? Uh, if so, you need to, <laughs> you know, we're trying to give you your money back because this shouldn't happen. So the idea behind that mech limit is we added more money into the policy and you can do this in a few ways. Mm -hmm. So which way? So the best way to do this or the way we do it is we actually use the policy. We use the policy to earn interest and the interest that we earn goes to that MEC limit. Yeah. So we didn't say that we're going to stop paying our premium. We didn't say that we're going to make any adjustments because we've all already put aside money to actually pay our premiums on an annual basis. So that money is still there it, the same way as if uh, we were direct depositing money into a bank. We're going to do the exact same thing. Now, when we borrow money from said bank to say our mortgage or our car note or whatever we borrow money for, we still have money going into the bank. But our additional funds we use to pay off that loan. Yeah. So as the money's coming in, paying off that loan again, I do have my money that I'm saving and putting aside. But secondly, I have the loan that I have that has some interest that's going to accumulate as I pay the interest back to myself. That interest is going to go towards my additional paid up additions. Yes. Are you looking for a life insurance policy specifically designed to help you accomplish your financial goals? 
And if you have a policy or if you're looking for more education, would you like to be a part of a community with like-minded individuals who are all using life insurance to accomplish your financial goals? If so, click on the link below. We would love for you to join the Wealth Nation Money School. Now let's show you in numbers exactly what we're talking about. So let's say in this $10,000 policy, we take a loan of $5,000. Now we know that the insurance company is going to charge us 4% interest on this loan. Okay, so if we take a $5,000 loan, we know we're going to be charged 4% interest. That's going to be $200 that we have to pay back to the insurance company. So we have to pay them, let's call it $5,200, right? In, uh, principal and then the interest. But this $5,000 loan that we took, we're getting interest at 10%, meaning we will get $500 from this particular investment or whatever we decide to, whatever interest we're getting from. Mm -hmm. So all we're going to do is we'll pay back the $5,000 to the insurance company plus the 200 in interest. And the Delta that we have left over is $300, right? Because we were earning 10% interest, $500. And we're just doing simple interest for this example to keep it simple. So the Delta we have is $300. So if we know we paid back the loan and the interest with the insurance company, what do we do with the $300 profit? That's where we then take that $300 and apply it to the additional paid up additions or that window that I referred to before. And that $300 in addition to the cash value existing inside the uh, life insurance policy is going to grow compounded interest. That's how you get ahead with this banking system. When we say pay yourself back, pay yourself first, this whole thing, because you own the banking system, which is your policy. And every little bit of interest that you're able to accumulate above and beyond the fees that it costs you. You, we put that into our policy um, as long as the life insurance policy can hold that additional capital. Right. Now, there's a couple of reasons why we would do this. We talked about the how. Now, let's let's talk about the why. The why is simple. Whenever you have a life insurance policy and you put money into this policy, you have a dividend that you earn, which means that you have more money available than what you put into this policy. That's why we have this paid up addition rider that we add to this policy. And a lot of times it's only for the first five years. So after that five years, my $10,000 policy, no longer am I adding to that paid up addition rider because I don't, I don't have to, because I've uh, built up uh, enough cash value where the base premium, like a traditional policy is starting to produce its own uh, cash value. Follow me so far. <laughs> Pause for a second. You got it. <laughs> Rewind us if you need. <laughs> Rewind us if you need and come back to this point. Well, 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 one thing I want to add to that point is the only reason why we have a paid up additions rider on the policy in the first place is to accelerate the, the growth of the cash value until the base premium can catch up. Mm -hmm. That's really the only reason why we, we add this. So a lot of times people are like, should I keep the paid up additions rider on? Should I? Should I not? It's just about doing the, the math and seeing if it makes sense. Because sometimes keeping the paid up additions rider on longer than you need to could stunt the policy and, and cause what they call kind of like a drag in, in the, the cash value growth. So sometimes we just, um, we, we, we stop paying it after, after a specific period of time when we realize the base premium can keep up with the cash value itself. Right. So the reason why we're doing this is because, again, let's say my $10,000 premium, which is now because I don't have the paid up addition rider on it, year five, I put $4,000 in. I have $6,000 worth of cash value that I can borrow. Mm -hmm. I put $4,000, $4,000 in that year. I have more money that I put it that is available to me than what I put in. Yeah. This happens every single year. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to accelerate this growth e even more, not by the money I put in, but from the interest that I've earned. And I'm going to put that into the policy. So it accelerates my system or grows my, my uh, life insurance policy faster. So the way you accelerate the growth of, of your life insurance policy is to use it yes. plain and simple. That's the easiest way. And that's the, the simple formula that we wanted to show you without throwing a whole bunch of numbers at you and showing you all sorts of tables. We just want you to get the concept where the point of life insurance or the point of this banking system is to get a loan, go make interest on that loan above and beyond what it costs you, and then put all of that money as much as you can back into the policy because you want that additional cash or that additional interest to earn the compound interest. So you can borrow that interest out again and earn more money. Now, you can do this in a few different ways, like we said, with the banking system of just that circle, you know, repeating that circle again and again. Sometimes you may get a bonus at work or you may get, um, you know, just extra cash that falls into your lap. A lot of times you can apply those funds.
add-ons to the additional paid up editions uh, rider if you don't have any uh, where to put it. And then that way, again, that money can continue to earn uh, interest. But the idea or the whole point of this system is making sure you understand what that window is for you because it's going to be different for everyone. For Darius in this particular policy, he could put in an additional $4,000. Um, for you, it might be 1000 or it mm-hmm. might be 10000 It just depends on the design of the policy, your age, your health. All of this is taken even, in, into consideration. Even the insurance company makes a, makes a difference because my... Sure particular policy i can add up to the mech limit every single year for the rest of my life mm-hmm. on other companies you may only be able to add to the mech limit um uh three times and and that's it that was my policy which is why we're 10 35 again <laughs> that's a whole other video so anyways the, the the we hope that this information was helpful in getting you to see how this process works because what we don't want you to do is just look at your illustration and then think that that's you're capped at the growth Right. Your illustration is just a guide as far as what the insurance company is going to do. If they say, this is how we're going to perform. This is what we're going to do. But it's all up to you and how you grow this, which is how uh, you can add additional interest into your policy so that it can grow exponentially. And also the mindset behind it, because for us, we only want to use our active income to pay our premiums. And that's it. The income mm-hmm. that we earn from investments, the income that we earn from uh, loans, those are the funds that we want to use to um, add to the additional paid up additions because that's money for for most of us that we didn't have to work for. Yeah, that's what's going to take you over to the next level on how you can use money um, a second and third time because the interest that we earn from our investments is what's going to grow our system that we can borrow and give it to somebody else and charge even and have even more money to charge interest on. Yeah, yeah. And one thing that I realized that we didn't um, talk about before also was you were saying that if we max out that MEC limit, mm-hmm. we're going to put money in a separate like checkings account, for example. Mm-hmm. And we do tend to do that when we know that our, this is our limit. We max out $4,000. In our case, we have multiple policies where we can access that window. So if we are tapped out on all of our policies, for example, then what we'll do is we'll take that money and just put it in a checkings account um, and uh, use it almost like as a holding pot to uh utilize when it comes time for us to be able to max out another policy. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. You just know this is my availability and whatever else I don't have, sit on it somewhere and and or use it for policy policy premiums, use it for any other thing that's going to help you grow your system. Mm-hmm. So uh, then the rule of thumb behind all of this is understanding how your policy grows. Your policy can grow three ways through your premium, through the interest that you pay back to the policy, what we're talking about today, and through the dividend. So the, you are in control of two of those options. <laughs> so me, why not max it out as much as you possibly can? Right. And you max that out by actually using the system and the process um, to serve you and your investments. It's money at work, not people at work. Mm. So in, in both of these examples, all these examples that we that we gave you, it wasn't us physically putting our own active income into the the policy to grow it. It's after we've used those funds and earned money from the money in which we invest invested or got a loan for that we use those funds to grow our money and it's that mindset that's going to take us uh uh to grow our system beyond where it is right now absolutely so if you want more information on how this entire system works go ahead and check out our next video remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will